you are tuned in to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lance White. Tonight, I have a special guest, and she will be known as Vatic. Vatic is a political activist who writes the controversial blog, The Vatic Project. She puts out a daily brief free to subscribers, and it's not for the timid. To say that she deals openly with the daily underbelly of global conspiracies is putting it mildly. <laughs> At 14, she met JFK personally, who uh, thanked her and shook her hand and uh, thanked the group of kids that were helping uh, make his appearance uh, possible. And that was one turning point, and another one occurred when she per personally witnessed the events of 911 in New York. She refers to this mind-boggling reality as cognitive dissonance. Vatic is here tonight to share her experience and knowledge, so let's welcome her to the show now. Hi, Vatic. How are you? Hey, I'm fine. <clears throat> I laughed. I chuckled when you said that about the uh, uh, bluntness of my blog. Oh, that, that rhymes, doesn't it? Bluntness of my blog. There you go. <laughs> And a, well, and an alliteration. There's a, yeah, there's a refreshing um, quality that you that you uh, add to it, which is uh, I don't know uh, if I can put my finger on it, but it's just it's a very personal uh, and uh, gutsy, pithy way of right. presenting information. I mean, it's like you know, uh, if you were a guy, I'd say it had something to do with something else, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's not get off on a side. You almost got into trouble on that one. <laughs> oh yeah, well we're going to get into trouble anyway, so I'm just okay. I'm just preparing the road. Um, <laughs> what was it like meeting JFK briefly? I, I we don't want to spend a lot of time on that, but was that Yeah, no, so I, I yeah, I was 16 when I met him. I was 14 when I first got into uh politics because my mother was uh. and I would just go with her everywhere. Uh, when she worked on campaigns. But I personally got involved uh, for two years, from 14 to 16, and created the first um, kids' organization in my high school. And we put, we got thousands of people out. Uh, we did a cavalcade of car parade. Um, we did all kinds of stuff and got everybody out and worked with um, JFK's advance man, uh, for two days, putting it all together, and when he gave his speech, I was an usherette right in the front um, in an usherette. He stepped down. He's just, he was an incredible man. We lost so much with him. He yeah. stepped down from the stage, this very important man. Everybody's trying to get him off the stage. He stepped down onto the press table, onto a chair, and down onto the floor to walk over just to shake my hand and thank me for all the work I had done. His advance man had told him about me. And, of oh. course, I tried to sneak into their hotel room that night, too. But <laughs> <laughs> See, you might be lucky that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I wanted to shake his hand, and he missed me at the airport. Oh, and so okay. That, okay. I that's why you. I went there was to, you know, oh. to get him to shake my hand and... Um, oh, sweet. I love that story. <laughs> yeah, I I got a lifetime of stories like that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we won't have any trouble uh, filling an hour, will we? Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, you, uh, I, I want to segue into your experience in New York, because I, I only know the, the briefest of details about that, but before I go there... Um, did you, I was in uh, pre-high school when JFK was shot, did did you, um, we all bought the idea that it was a lone gunman at the time, 
Uh, oh. And since then, have you had a chance to... Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> somehow, I'd like to have you tie that information into the 911 event. Okay. When we talk about um, that. I was 18 when he was shot. Okay. Um, and a lot of people don't remember this, but I, because of my experience with him at 16, you know, I I was just an avid follower of the man, okay? Yeah. When he was shot, um, within six months, a film came out called Executive Suite. I, I know nobody remembers this. And on that movie, and you can get it now um, off of one of these free Internet uh, movie places. Uh-huh. And, and it, when you watch that movie, it is exactly what now, today, most of us believe. Okay. But back in those days, nobody believed it. Yeah. That it was about high-powered banking, corporate, and, of course, the CIA and and other groups right. that had co- colluded to kill him. Right. And, right. and it, it was not us, you know, um, what's his name that shot him. It wasn't, you know, uh, just the CIA. It was bankers and corporate uh, executives yes. involved yes. as well. So yes. it's, and now, as far as tying in, the new, who, the, the new, the new, the new who, uh, the guy in, who spent 18 years in jail in Israel, the new who, the new who, I think. Anyway, um, he just came out, uh, what, a year ago or less, and told us point blank that Israel killed JFK. Yeah, and, I heard that. I heard that. Mm-hmm, he came out and flat said it. And then we now know, you know, on my blog, I have a blog up. That is, it, it, the title is, Israel did 9-11, all the proof in the world. And it is. I mean, <laughs> it is very extensive, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Explosive information. Now, we'll, yes. we'll get into why, what, why you come to those conclusions and the okay. other uh, groups that are most likely involved with this, because it's not just one group. It's a, we're talking about a global uh, network uh that is so well organized and it, it operates like uh, smooth as glass and it's so well that we're all yes. in the dark about 99% of the things that go on in the world and that includes all of the lone gunman shootings they're all probably related the wars that are created now let's segue into 911 because that was another turning point for you you yes, were in New York witnessing no. or, weren't you no, no, I was on raw, I had raw live feed. The okay. difference between video and raw live feed is that I am watching it as it happens uh, because there's no, you know, I mean, it's being filmed as I'm watching it, okay? Right, right. That's the difference, and there was a major difference between raw live feed and what showed on the video replays that night, um, major difference. It was like two different worlds. Um, well, could you what tell I us, saw, yeah, tell us yeah, what, what you I saw and, and okay. what the differences were. Yeah, well, during the day, my sister called. I was working out of my house. I had I had a business. I owned a business at the time, and I had hired a woman to come over and help me. And so her and I were there together working, and. The office was running itself, you know, with all my employees. Yeah. So my sister called when the first plane hit and said, told me it had happened. So I, we went immediately dropped everything we were doing, turned on the television, and sat there all day watching everything, okay? Uh-huh. What happened was when I, there was a cameraman standing right in front of the built, first building to go down, and he was filming... And he must have had it zoomed in because it looked like he was just right right there at the, you know, the entrance to the building. Well, uh-huh. it, he was back a bit, and you could see both sides of the building. In other words, you know, the, you know, not just the lobby, but <clears throat> the whole downstairs area. 
Oh. And when the explosions went off, and they went off, I saw them, they started at the ground floor, so it had to have been below ground, and yeah. went up, okay? And we watched the glass go out just like we both, the first thing out of both our mouths was, oh, my God, they planted charges. Uh-huh. It was it was like a controlled demolition. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, windows blowing out, glass going out, bam, 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 all the way up with the exact same um, uh, d- uh, time difference between them of maybe two seconds each wow. going up. And then the building started coming down, and I knew instantly, instantly it hit me. There's no way anybody could have gotten into those buildings to plant that many charges to bring down that building unless it was an inside job. Uh, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but... Right, right. It, so, yeah, so you there's weren't no in way. Deni- you weren't in denial at all about this. You, you no. immediately grasped the, the significance of what you saw. Yeah, but, but I had to. I had no choice. I wasn't given any time. Um, I, I was an instant understanding that this was not done by anyone except on the inside. And it could not be, I instantly knew it could not be um, the people who owned the building by themselves because yeah. they had no control over the, the planes flying. Yeah. Also, Dick Cheney, I knew from the night before FEMA was there, uh, I had seen the press conference where they had talked about being there for war games. Yeah, yeah. And immediately all of that hit me all at once, and I knew that my elected government, sworn to protect and defend me and my country, had betrayed it. I knew instantly we had been betrayed. They murdered American citizens. Mm -hmm. And at that point, when I realized that they had taken a risk to do this, Mm -hmm. that the agenda had to be huge. Mm -hmm. It had to be beyond anything I could imagine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I went through cognitive dissonance. I immediately got ill. I doubled up. My stomach hurt. I mean, I had pain, horrible grabbing pain in my gut. And I was doubled over the couch, um, and I started crying. I knew. I knew that the world as I had known it was gone, and it was never going to be the same. And I suffered physical shock reaction to that cognitive dissonance. Most people have time. In fact, most people have taken time to get to where we are today. I mean, the... They're catching up, but I didn't have that luxury, and I knew instantly everything that I had ever, everything was gone. I knew it, and so I had to pursue this. So for 10 years, I have been sounding the alarm like the watchman on the tower. I've been Mm. sounding the alarm, warning people, and with my background in finance and political science and, you know, all that. Um, I could see better than most what was going on because I have a minor in macroeconomics. Oh. So, you know, so that made a, a big difference in my be- ability to understand what was going on. Plus, my business was in the finance area. Oh, okay. So you were see? kind of almost, uh, you were uh, cut out for doing this, really. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I've been, it was like I've been prepared my whole life. Wow, that's amazing. For this. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, um, there's an additional uh, element that I had never heard anywhere, and I think uh, it has to do, I, I, I want you to tell us, because I don't remember this story or how it goes, but the, the uh, landing of the plane with Bush and the clapping. Oh, yes. Yeah. Tell that story um, and where that came from and, and uh Sure. Well, as you know, they were covering the press was covering this, the reporters were covering this all day long. Yeah. Uh they covered Bush down in Florida and then when he left, he flew to Nebraska. You are tuned into a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. 
Join us now on another exciting metaphysical journey. Relax, tune in, drop out, and take a seat by the fire as we explore new realms and possibilities. This is Magenta Vince White. Tonight, I have a special guest, and she will be known as Vatic. Vatic is a political activist who writes the controversial blog, The Vatic Project. She puts out a daily brief free to subscribers, and it's not for Pixie. You can find me at magentapixie.weebly.com. But now, here is Zany Mystic and guest. Enjoy the show. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a fireside chat with Zany Mystic. I'm your host, Lana Timid. To say that she deals openly with the daily underbelly of global conspiracies is putting it mildly. <laughs> At 14, she met JFK personally, who uh, thanked her and shook her hand and uh, thanked the group of kids that were helping uh, make his appearance uh, possible. And that was one turning point, and another one occurred when she per personally witnessed the events of 911 in New York. She refers to this mind-boggling reality as cognitive...